Do you have questions about your employment rights? Ask a Lawyer is here for you. Each week, experts from employmentlawyer.ca answer your questions. Visit cp24.com slash askalawyer and watch Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. on CP24. If you've ever had a question about your employment law rights, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Ask a Lawyer. I'm your host, Dana Levinson. Each week, we dive into different employment-related topics that are in many Canadians' minds. Employment lawyer Lior Simpuro, partner at Simpuro to Market LLP, is here once again. Before we get into today's questions and phone calls, Lior, tell us a little bit about why you feel it's important that every Canadian know their employment law rights and perhaps talk about a significant case from this week. Well, Dana, it really comes down to misconceptions and, and half-truth. Everyone thinks that they know a lot about employment law. They think they understand what the law says. And most of that information that you believe to be true, maybe you've believed for years, is in fact wrong. It's false. There's a lot of misconceptions, a lot of misleading information you can find online. Here's where, you know, going on Google and just trying to find out, it's probably not the best idea. So I like having this forum where I can come on and talk about the things you need to know and the rights you didn't even know that you had. It's not always going to be perfect in the workplace. We're going to have issues sometimes, maybe some conflict. That's why I think it's important that all our viewers understand, know their rights, and know what to do if they're facing a workplace problem. And let me give you an example, mm -hmm. a situation that came across my desk over the past few days. Uh, so back in the spring of 2020, the Ontario government implemented something called the Infectious Disease Emergency Leave. Essentially, that allows employers to put employees off work if the employer is struggling because of COVID-19. So we have many employees that have been off now for over two years because of this. Now, that period of time during which you can be off on leave expires at the end of July. So employees now, by law, have to be recalled back to work. Well, I spoke with a lady this week. She got a letter from her employer saying, we know that we're supposed to recall you, but we can't, so we're actually going to put you on a layoff. Now, remember, this lady has been off for well over two years already. She's been waiting anxiously to go back to work. Well, that's illegal, Dana. Her employer does not have a right to extend this leave by now calling it a layoff. This is a termination of employment. She, in fact, could have pursued a termination of employment even earlier. But now, certainly, when her employer is saying, you're not coming back to work at the end of July, that is a termination. She's owed seven. She has no obligation to continue waiting, fingers crossed, hoping that at some point she'll get called back to work. So I think there's an important lesson for all our viewers. If you're not being called back to work, if you've been waiting to be back and you're not being called back, or maybe your company doesn't know, maybe they're extending it, maybe they're just not getting back to you, enough is enough. You can treat that as a termination, get your full severance, which can be as much as 24 months. I've already spoken with a lot of people in that situation. Mm -hmm. If you're in that situation, give me a call. And certainly there are probably lots and lots of people in that boat and they don't have the right information. So if you want to get in touch with Lior and his team, you can call 1-888-861-4555, email ask at employmentlawyer.ca or visit their website, employmentlawyer.ca. Let's kick things off by taking our first call. Lior, these calls come from your radio show that's across Ontario and also across Canada, where you take questions live from listeners about their employment law issues. Take a listen. My husband, he was a truck driver at 59, working for a company for about eight years. It got sold to another person, and they kept on all the staff. He had an illness, and he was on a prescription for it. They told him it might make him a bit cantankerous. He did get that way, and he was suspended for a day. And the next day, the company, they called him up and said, bring back the keys, you're no longer working here. And they gave him two weeks severance. So this is, there's a lot wrong here in this yeah. scenario. Number one, if he's 
sick, if he has a medical condition and he's taking medication, there's going to be side effects, and an employer has to accommodate those side effects and be at least understanding in that situation. If you're taking medication, if you have a medical condition, you can't be expected, your employer can't expect you that everything is going to be fine. So you should tell your employer, hey, employer, I'm taking this medication or I have this issue and it may impact my workplace. You may even have to bring in a, a doctor's note to that effect. And you can't be let go because of that. That would be a human rights violation. Now, the second issue here is that of severance, of course. So this person is owed a lot more severance than what they've actually been offered. Now, you can find out, anyone can find out right now easily how much severance you're owed. So let's take this scenario, let's plug it into pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. We have our severance calculator tool. Again, it's pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, and let's see what that gives us. So as we can see, this person has worked there for eight years, uh, and we know they're 59 years old, and offered two weeks pay. That's inadequate. You can see right on the screen there, this person is owed as much as 10 months pay, 10 months of severance. So this is a wrongful dismissal. Same with you at home. You may think you're owed a week per year or two weeks per year. That's wrong. Go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca to find out what you're really owed. Again, anonymous and free, so definitely check it out. And that's a huge difference, two weeks to 10 months. It's massive. Yes. And it's, it's going to be tens of thousands of dollars easily, of right. course. Okay, so let's take a short break. And when we come back, employment lawyer Lior Sinfuro from employmentlawyer.ca will cover the things your employer won't tell you. Stay with us. Do you have questions about your employment rights? Ask a Lawyer is here for you. Each week, experts from employmentlawyer.ca answer your questions. Visit cp24.com slash askalawyer and watch Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. on CP24. Welcome back to Ask a Lawyer. Employment lawyer Lior Sinfuro from employmentlawyer.ca is taking your employment law questions. If you want to get in touch with Lior and his team, you can call 1 888 861 4555, email ask at employmentlawyer.ca, or visit their website employmentlawyer.ca. We have more calls and emails coming in. Lior, before jumping into those questions, let's get to today's main topic things your employer won't tell you. Okay, so here we go. Number one, you are likely owed more severance pay than they will offer you. So we're talking about things your employer won't tell you, but guess what? We will. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, and, and probably the, the main one and the biggest one, the one you just mentioned, is your severance. Your employer is not going to tell you that their severance offer, the one they offered you, is not adequate. But guess what? It is. In over 90% of cases, and I'm being conservative here, in over 90% of cases, that severance letter that you're reading with that severance offer is completely inadequate. And I'm not talking the difference between six months and seven months. I'm talking the difference between six months and 18 months. Wow. So chances are, if you've been let go, whatever your employer offers you is pennies on the dollar. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, your employer itself may be ignorant as to its obligations. But the second reason, probably the more likely reason, is your employer hopes that you won't know any better, that you won't know what you're owed. Well, if you're watching us now, you do know better. We just told you something your employer won't tell you. If you lost your job, go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca to calculate your severance. Give me a call, but do the smart thing. Don't just accept that inadequate offer. Okay, number two on the list of things your employer won't tell you, your rights when you return from a maternity or paternity leave. So the law is very clear here, and, and I don't know why employers keep getting this wrong. If mm. you take a parental leave, okay, you're owed the same compensation that you had before, the same job, the same responsibilities. Company can't keep your replacement, even if they like that person better for some reason, they have to take you back. In fact, if your uh, job that you had pays more now than it did when you left, you have to get this higher salary. So oftentimes employers try to get away with saying, well, we'll give you a similar job, or we'll, we'll just make some minor changes. Can't do that, can't touch the job. So if you had a job that looked a certain way and paid a certain way, when you left, you have that right to that same job again. And if they don't do that, 
That's an employment standards violation. That's a human rights violation. It could be a constructive dismissal. You name it. That's not something an employer should ever do. Okay. Things your employer won't tell you. Number three, you're not really an independent contractor. Being misclassified mm -hmm. as an independent contractor when you're not. Listen, employers love having independent contractors because it's less expensive to have an independent contractor. Mm -hmm. You don't have to uh, pay uh, into EI and CPP. You don't have to deduct taxes. You don't have to pay pesky things like vacation pay and overtime. So it's good for employers. And they may tell you, yeah, we'll just call you an independent contractor. Well, guess what? That's not how it works. If you have a regular job, you are an employee. It doesn't matter what the company calls you. That's also important if you lose your job, because as an employee, you're owed severance. As an independent contractor, you're not. So one way to find out, you can do that right now, if you are an employee, to find out if you're an employee or a contractor. I mentioned it before, our pocketemploymentlawyer.ca tool has a tool there that allows you to find out if you're a contractor or an employee. Mm -hmm. So check it out. Chances are you've been misclassified. Okay, number four on our look at things your employer won't tell you. You get overtime pay even if you're on salary. So another big misconception is employers and employees get this wrong, that overtime is only something that's paid to hourly employees. Not true, not at all. Even if you're on a salary, you get paid overtime if you work more than 44 hours a week. Anything over that is time and a half. So whatever your weekly salary is, you divide that by 44, that gets you an hourly rate. Time and a half is your overtime rate. So yeah, salary, you absolutely still get overtime. Okay, and number five, the things your employer won't tell you. If the business is sold, you don't have to accept a job with the new owner. So you may assume, or your employer may assume, that if the business is sold and you have a job offer from the buyer, well, you have to take that offer. Not so fast. You don't. If you choose not to take an offer with the buyer, then your employment is terminated and you are owed severance. Wow. Now, if you have a good reason as to why you're not taking the offer, may, maybe the job is different, maybe the, the pay is different, then you get your full severance. If you don't have a good reason, you just don't want to take it, you still get severance, but it's going to be less severance. But either way, you don't have an obligation to take an offer from the buyer, and it is a termination of employment if you don't continue working. So don't fall for that pressure tactic. It's not a given. It is up to you, the employee, to decide what to do in a sale of business situation. Okay, let's listen to another phone call from one of your live radio shows. Take a listen. I've been with the company for, say, about 14 years doing the same job, give or take, but the same shift. So work is a bit slow, so for them to find work for me, they're putting me on an afternoon shift where I've been working days. If I refuse, do I have recourse for a severance? Big change to go mm -hmm. from you know a, a day shift to an afternoon shift. It's, it's a massive change. It would change everything for you in, in your daily life. Of course, you, have, you have to build your life around that. Yeah. And it's not something an employer is allowed to do. Such a magnitude of a change, your employer can't do that. So if they go ahead and do that anyway, you now, the employee, have the right to say that's a constructive dismissal. Mm -hmm. By changing my hours in such a significant way or, or my shift, I am treating that as a termination and I get severance. It's not the type of change an employer can do. So you, you choose. You accept it and continue working. That is your right. Or you treat that as a termination, just a word of caution. If you accept this change and you continue working, you've given the company the right to make other changes and to do it again and again because you set that precedent. So be very careful with that. In this situation, that's a constructive dismissal very easily. Okay, lots of amazing information, Lior. Let's take a short break. When we come back, Lior from employmentlawyer.ca tackles myths about mandatory retirement and termination for cause. Do you have questions about your employment rights? Ask a Lawyer is here for you. Each week, experts from employmentlawyer.ca answer your questions. Visit cp24.com slash askalawyer and watch Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. on CP24.
Welcome back to Ask a Lawyer. Lior Sapiro from employmentlawyer.ca is taking questions about your workplace rights. If you want to get in touch with Lior and his team, you can call 1-888-861-4555, email ask at employmentlawyer.ca, or visit their website, employmentlawyer.ca. We still have lots more to discuss. Here's another call from Lior's radio show. Take a listen. And I was working with the company for about a year and seven months. I was recruited out of a different company to become a store manager. Upon perfect results for the store hitting targets, about five months later, they came in and said they were investigating me for allegations. Three days after that, I was handed a letter saying I was uh, let go effective immediately with cause, and I didn't sign any paperwork or anything. What do you think of that? Well, there's quite a bit of uh, things to unpack here, Dana. Mm -hmm. So the first thing, of course, is he's being investigated uh, and he was terminated for cause. Well, remember, to be let go for cause, which means you don't get severance, you would have had to do something pretty darn bad. Mm -hmm. It would have to be the, the, the capital punishment of the employment relationship, which is reserved for the worst offenders. If what you did is so bad that you can't be employed anymore, then maybe then you can be let go for cause. Now, I don't know what this person is alleged to have done, but something tells me that he wouldn't be calling if what he did was was that bad he would have known that so it's likely not caused right off the bat which then brings the issue of what he's owed now the interesting thing here he says that he was recruited from another job mm -hmm. well here's how that works if you have a job and then you're recruited from the other job only to then be let go you're gonna be owed enhanced severance that accounts for the time you had with the previous company so I'll give you an example. If you worked for a company for 10 years, you were recruited away, and then a year later you were let go by this other company. Well, you're now an 11-year employee for the purposes of your severance, even though you only worked for that second company for one year. We call this inducement. So he was induced, he says, to leave another job. He may owed, be owed enhanced severance. But even if we forget about the inducement just for a second, how much is he owed in the normal situation as a, as a two-year employee? Well, let's go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca again. Let's plug that information in there and let's see how much he's owed, even if we forget that he was induced to leave a secure job. So we know that he was a store manager. He worked there for just under two years. Let's say he's 48 years old. You can see on the screen he is owed up to six months pay, four to six months of severance. And that could be substantially more if, in fact, it can establish that he was induced to leave a secure job. He was recruited from that job. So that many reasons you have right there to get some advice if you lose your job. Number one, it's not cause. Number two, you're owed severance. Number three, there's additional factors like being recruited that enhance your severance. Uh, I don't know what more reasons you can have and should have to get advice if you lose your job. Yes, because I think it would be very difficult for people to even wrap their head around, I'm in a, I'm in a new job, I have a new employer. They took me from another job, and yet that old employer is going to pay my severance. It well, seems... it, it's going to be the new employer that's mm -hmm. going to pay the severance, right. but it's going to account for the time with right. the old employer. Right. And, and I've seen situations where someone has worked for a few months, mm -hmm. but they had 10 or 15 years of credit for the previous company, and all of a sudden they're getting 18-month severance after only working for a company for a few months. But wow. again, you have to get some advice if you're in that situation. 100%. Okay, here's an email from another viewer. I turned 65 in a few months. My boss told me that once a worker hits that age, they can be legally let go because it's the age of retirement. He did say that most people in that situation often get at least two weeks of pay. I, I, I'm, my neck's going to hurt if I'm going to shake my head as much <laughs> as I want to shake my head at this situation. It's ridiculous. Let's start with the idea that there's no such thing as mandatory retirement. There's no quote-unquote that age. In Ontario, we got rid of mandatory retirement some 17 or 18 years ago, a long time ago. You can work to whatever age you want, whether it's 65, 75, or any other age. And if you're told to, to you, have, you have to resign or you're forced to resign, that's a human rights violation. That's illegal. And by the way, if a company owes you, uh, they, sorry, if they let you go, the severance that they owe you is going to be a lot more than two weeks pay. It's going to be measured in the months and could be as much as 24 months pay. So my advice to this person would be to tell their employer, thanks, but no thanks. I'm going to continue working until I decide that I don't want to work here anymore and leave it at that. If the company lets them go because of their age, age discrimination, illegal. Okay, let's take one last break. When we return, Lior from employmentlawyer.ca explains working notice and a company's response to remote workers' dilemma. Stay with us.
Do you have questions about your employment rights? Ask a Lawyer is here for you. Each week, experts from employmentlawyer.ca answer your questions. Visit cp24.com slash askalawyer and watch Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. on CP24. Welcome back to Ask a Lawyer. Lior Sinfuro from employmentlawyer.ca is answering your employment law questions. You can connect with his team by calling 1-888-861-4555, email ask at employmentlawyer.ca, or visit their website, employmentlawyer.ca. Let's take a look at another situation your team has come across. I was fired due to right-sizing after working for a company for 17 years. They gave me two months advance notice of my last day, but canceled the arrangement one week in. Should I call the Ministry of Labor? You should never call the Ministry of Labor if you lose your job. They cannot help you enforce your full legal entitlements, only a small, small portion. Bad idea. A company can give working notice instead of severance, but if they don't give sufficient working notice, they have to make up the difference by way of severance. That's what happened here. Certainly can help this employee. It's not complicated. Okay, time for one other question, this time from one of your live streams in Facebook and YouTube, so which people can find by searching at stlawyers.ca. Last week, my internet was down all day, making it impossible to work remotely from home. As punishment, my boss permanently stripped away some of my key duties and assigned them to a new co-worker. How should I respond? Listen, in a remote work environment, an employer has to understand that these things will happen. It's the reality. And you can't be punished because your internet went down. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Now, an employer in that situation that takes away their job or changes their job, that's a constructive dismissal. They can't do that. Your employer can't do that. She can treat that as a termination and get severance. That's just ridiculous for the employer to do. Lior, thank you so much for being here today. You can catch legal experts from employmentlawyer.ca on Ask a Lawyer every Wednesday on CP24. For more information on this show and employmentlawyer.ca, visit cp24.com slash askalawyer. Join us again next week as we review employment law red flags. Thanks for watching. Do you have questions about your employment rights? Ask a Lawyer is here for you. Each week, experts from employmentlawyer.ca answer your questions. Visit cp24.com slash askalawyer and watch Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. on CP24.